Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In his novel 1984, George Orwell wrote, Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. In this video, I'm going to explore how that principle applies to both the global and U.S. temperature records. I'm going to show a lot of graphs in this video, but please stay tuned until the end when I tie everything together. In 1984, NASA's James Hansen wrote a paper predicting large amounts of warming around the world and about 5 degrees Celsius warming in some parts of the United States. But by 1999, Dr. Hansen had become discouraged that the U.S. temperature trend, according to his own data, was declining. He wanted the very high-quality U.S. temperature trend to look like the very low-quality global temperature trend. This map shows where NASA and NOAA have temperature records from 1895, pretty good coverage in the United States, and almost no coverage in South America. And it's the same story in Africa, the Middle East, and much of Asia. There is not enough data available to calculate historical global temperatures. There's no way to compute a legitimate long-term global temperature graph because there isn't enough historical data available. But Dr. Hansen wanted the graphs to show warming and the U.S. temperature record wasn't. So they came up with a scheme to make the U.S. temperature look like it was warming by altering the data. This graph is from 2005. In early versions of the data tampering, they largely left temperatures prior to 1960 alone and then started warming them progressively after that. But the total amount of data tampering was only about one half degree Fahrenheit. And almost all of the data tampering was due to time of observation bias, which does have some legitimate scientific basis. But now the amount of data tampering which NOAA and NASA are doing is about four or five times larger than it was 20 years ago. And time of observation bias is a minor component of it. The rest of this data tampering is very difficult to account for. By tampering with the data, Dr. Hansen got what he wanted to see. He turned a cooling trend in the United States into a warming trend over the same period. So now we're going to take a look and see if this data tampering, or adjustments as NASA and NOAA like to call them, are legitimate. This graph is from the NOAA State Climate Summaries, and it shows that hot temperatures in the United States used to be much more common, and they've declined sharply over the last 80 years. During the 1930s, the United States averaged nearly 25 days over 95 degrees Fahrenheit, or 35 degrees Celsius, per year. Now the frequency of 90 degree days is just a little over half what it was during the 1930s, and recent years have been among the lowest on record. The United States Historical Climatology Network is by far the best historical climate network in the world covering a large area. The average summer maximum temperature from all of these stations has declined sharply since the 1930s. Now we're going to take a look at a graph of the percent of summer days over 90 degrees Fahrenheit in the United States. As you can see, the two graphs are very similar. This is the percent of days over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is the average summer maximum temperature. This graph shows the average summer maximum temperature on the x-axis and the percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit on the y-axis. As you can see, there's very good correlation with an R-squared of 0.91. For every 1 degree Fahrenheit increase in temperature, we get a 4.41% increase in the number of 90 degree days. It shouldn't surprise anyone that a higher average maximum temperature is going to correlate with more hot days. This seems pretty obvious. Because more hot days is going to cause the average maximum temperature to be higher. Now let's take a look at what happens to this correlation after NOAA tampers with the data. By tampering with the data, they turn a measured cooling trend into a warming trend. And not surprisingly, this data tampering wrecks the correlation between temperature and the number of hot days. Now we have a large amount of scatter and the R squared drops to 0.56, which is not very good. What we can see is that NOAA's data tampering 
made the data much less credible. By tampering with the data, NOAA has seriously damaged the value of their data set. The measured temperature data is very credible, with a high correlation between it and the number of hot days. But their data tampering produces very poor correlation. They've wrecked their data set by altering it. It's not plausible to have a decrease in the number of hot days while summer afternoon temperatures are increasing. Their altered data makes no sense. Now let's take a look at the massive data tampering which is occurring, which cools some historical temperatures more than 1 degree Fahrenheit and warms recent temperatures by an equal amount. That's about 2 degrees of data tampering which NOAA is doing. And as I mentioned earlier, the amount of data tampering they're doing has increased by about 400% over the past 20 years. Now we're going to do some forensics to understand what NOAA is doing. The graph on the left shows the amount of data tampering which NOAA is doing for U.S. summer afternoon temperatures. And the graph on the right is the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Notice that it looks very similar to the graph on the left. And this next graph is the real stunner. Along the x-axis is the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and along the y-axis is how much NOAA is altering the U.S. summer temperature data. There's an incredible correlation of 0.97, which shows that NOAA is altering the data to match their carbon dioxide theory. In other words, the purpose of their altered final temperature sets is to generate propaganda. It has nothing to do with science. That's really bad, but what they're doing with the global temperature record is much worse. They're altering the U.S. temperature record to create about 2 degrees of fake warming over the last 120 years. They tell us that the measured temperature data is so bad that this cooling trend isn't real. They say that the real trend is warming. Now let's do a comparison between how NOAA handles the very high quality U.S. temperature record versus the extremely low quality global temperature record. They have no idea what historical global temperatures are because there isn't enough data to even make a guess. Yet five different groups have come up with extremely close agreement, showing temperature differences of only a few tenths of a degree. Let's read what NOAA says in their Global Historical Climatology Network documentation. Reasonably good records of instrument type and observing practices are maintained for stations in the U.S., but the types of instrumentation and observing practices are most often unknown for stations outside the country. They tell us they need to alter the very high quality U.S. temperature record by about 2 degrees Fahrenheit, but the much lower quality global temperature record with very poor coverage and little documentation of their observing practices all five groups agree on within a few tenths of a degree. They tell us that they can't even calculate the U.S. temperature trend without knowing the observing practices of past observers, but that data isn't even available with the global temperature data. So by using their own standards, they have no idea whether the globe was warming or cooling during this period. With the very low quality global temperature record, they're simply making up a bunch of fake data. And with a very high quality U.S. temperature record, they're tampering with the data to turn cooling into warming. Both the adjusted U.S. temperature graph and the published global temperature graphs are massively fraudulent. But people want to believe in authority. Someone tweeted this last summer. Average global temperatures per year since 1880 until 2023. So I asked the question, Please explain how you calculated global temperatures in 1880 with no data from the vast majority of the planet. And I got this not very surprising response. There are numerous scientific bodies who've calculated temperatures from the readings in 1800. They all agree to 0.1 to 0.2 degrees. So instead of being disturbed by these obviously fraudulent graphs, which can't possibly be correct, he took comfort in them. And this leads us back to Orwell's 1984. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. In his next video, Toto will go into more detail about corruption of the U.S. temperature record. 
You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.